everyone. Uh, welcome to the GRRP office hours. Um, I have shared my screen showing uh, the uh, guidelines for participants, but um, please remain muted unless you're asking a question. Uh, we'll call participants in the order that hands are raised. So raise your hand if you got a question. Um, we are um, uh, going to shorten our office hours to half an hour starting today. Um, my apologies, we'll, we'll uh, get this slide updated. Uh, but uh, we've seen a, a little bit of drop off in traffic as people are getting used to uh, GRRP and don't have quite as many questions. Uh, we are still available at um, GRRP at HUD.gov uh, if you have written questions that you would like to submit. And then we're uh, continuing to hold this every week for half an hour um, to, to be able to have some time to answer questions. Um, a couple of things to highlight. Um, uh, we wanted to make sure to mention that um, some updates were published to the elements uh, NOFO. Uh, so uh, be sure to check those out if that's a, a cohort that you're interested in. Um, we also wanted to highlight because uh, this became an issue uh, for our last comprehensive uh, deadline. Um, we're going to be, uh, we're, we are able to extend the due date for those in a, in a presidentially declared disaster zone. Uh, so for uh, Florida in, in with the hurricane that occurred right as applications were due, uh, it does have to be within a very short time period of uh, the disaster and uh, the presidential declared disaster must be active, but we are able to give um, extensions uh, of up to seven days uh, for properties that are um, located or headquarters that are located in an area uh, of a presidentially declared disaster. Um, one last thing to highlight, uh, we have a new video up on our comprehensive page um, showing the scoring. Um, so if you're curious about how the comprehensive scoring works, uh, want to understand more about it, uh, there is a video on the uh, comprehensive uh, webpage uh, showing you how the scoring works and uh, talking through how you can find your property's score. So um, those are the quick things to highlight uh, um, before we get started. And we'll go ahead and start with Mike Goldman. It looks like you're up first. Hi, thank you. Uh, my question is actually uh, having to do with something you call DCR. And um, when you just said scoring, it raised a ray of hope with me. We fall outside your required DCR. Does Is that a, a deal breaker or is that a, um, a demerit in your scoring system? Um, so the debt service coverage ratio, is that what, is that what you're talking about? Uh-huh. Yeah. It has um, to be 1.3 or less. And um, I, I frankly, I don't mean to be rude, I don't have, I don't understand why HUD would have this great program for multifamily buildings of HUDs and the money to improve the energy efficiency of those buildings. And then all of a sudden we read that we have to have a, a DCR of under something. It, it's, it just seems irrelevant, but it also may be a deal breaker, which is I think way more important to us. Yeah, Sarah, do you wanna talk about debt service coverage ratio and why, why we have the limit? Sure. So the first thing I'll note is that that is only applicable to the elements in the leading edge cohorts. So those are the cohorts that we think are going to be part of larger recapitalizations in elements. It's required that you're doing a larger recapitalization for the project. And in leading edge, it's probable that you will do that. And, and we do have that requirement um, in order to ensure that basically that the GRP money is needed for the improvements that are being made. Um, and so I think if there is a situation where the, D, the, the debt service coverage is higher than 1.3 in the early years in order for it to stay to meet lender or other requirements, then that's an exception that you can submit and it won't uh, throw you out. But we, we are really looking that there's that the money is needed. And is that what you just said, is that written down someplace so that I could share it with my staff? Sure. So it's one of the exhibits to the notice. I believe it's exhibit B to the notice, housing notice 2023-5. 
um, which talks about all the financial thresholds that are applicable to the project. It's, it, it, it's a form of subsidy layering review. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'll also note there are also alternate requirements if your project has no debt. So if it hasn't what? If it has no debt. So if you have no debt on the project, there is a different requirement. We don't require you to have debt. No, we have debt. <laughs> Um, great. Thanks, Mike. Did you have any other questions? Otherwise, I don't see any other hands raised. Does anyone else have questions? Well, well you... if I have the microphone and no other hands are raised, a question. So there's some place in, in the paperwork, um, a, a statement that in order to qualify, over 50% of the units have to be HUD. So we have three buildings in on our campus two of them are hud i call them hud buildings you're holding the mortgage and the third one is uh, um, smaller but it's it's the state department of housing and community development the housing opportunity commission it's it's a smaller 42 unit building but my question to you is, if, if the DCR is not in our way, um, if, the, if it doesn't stop us, could we include the third building in these energy efficiency upgrades? Because to totally, I mean, we have 235 apartments in the two HUD buildings, and the, the one that's a state building is, is 42, so it, it's well over 50%. But does that mean we could we could uh, do improvements on the third building as well? So um, you do have to have, and I want to be clear of what you're saying, HUD buildings, that you have to have a project-based rental assistance contract uh, or a Section 202 or an 811 PRAC uh, property. So just having a HUD mortgage uh, wouldn't qualify the property. You have to have um, a, a contract for rental assistance. So Yes, no, no, no. They're, yeah. So they're, the two buildings are HUD properties, Section 202 going back 30 some odd years. And uh, we, all of our tenants meet the HUD guidelines for subsidized rental uh, apartments. So, um, yeah. So in that case, do you know if if the if your how your project is set up in in HUD system? Is, are these set up as separate buildings, or do you have? Um, so the the so we built one. And then five years later, we built the second one with a uh, HUD mortgage. And um, and you're correct in smelling that they are separate. They're, they're all together, but legally, um, I think that they're, certainly the two buildings are um, in one company and the third building is in another company because that's how they had to do it to make it all happen in those days okay but it's all yeah. part of the same homecrest house uh label and campus yeah so i think if, if what i'm understanding your situation is correct you maybe have two buildings that have hud assistance and one that does not and they're all on the same campus but the two buildings with hud assistance are separate in hud system is That's that, correct. Okay. Yeah. So I think you would have to apply for both of the buildings um, sure. and then we would consolidate them after the fact. But I think then you could expand, you know, you could, you could say your deal is going to include all three of the buildings um, as part of the final product um, for, for those buildings. So we, we would be able to, in the final analysis, include the third building. That's the DHCD and the uh, Home, uh, Housing Opportunities Commission kind of um, Okay, well, that's great. Now I have to just find out about this Exhibit D to see if we can deal with this question of, of DCR. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, Joshua, do you have a question? I do. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, good, how are you? Doing fine, thank you. 
Um, my question, we are on the um, technical assistance side of things, and so we would be providing energy audits and um, energy models to help owners figure out the scope of work that they want to pursue through the GRP program. And my question is, in terms of um, the fees that we would charge, my understanding is that our fee would be included in the total request of funds to HUD and then would be paid out as the project goes through. Is that correct? Yeah, so soft costs can be part of the transaction. And so that's where I assume your your um, okay. fees would be paid as, as in, in the transaction structure. Um, Sarah, did you want to say anything else about that? No, that's that's right. Those would be uh, soft costs. And can they be paid out during the process or is that only once you reach like construction closing or 50% construction and things like that? So the notice describes the kind of requirements on when you can draw funds um, in in the various cohorts, but they can generally be drawn during the process. There is a retainage requirement for all of the cohorts in order to ensure that the work is completed. So there that that's up to the owner. We're not, um, I believe we're requesting draw schedules for all of the closing packages and we'll review, but we're not dictating it besides the general guidelines in the notice. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yep. I guess the one clarification is that in general, it needs to be a current obligation, particularly for the actual investments. So we can't invest, we can't reimburse things that have already been paid for, but we can pay for things that are in a current draw. Gotcha. Does anyone else have questions? Or Joshua, did you have another question? I do, yes. Okay. Um, so we're working with a, a couple different groups um, around the country on these applications and curious about um, kind of any lessons learned you have from applications you've reviewed so far. So things that people have missed or haven't filled out correctly. Um, I'm not sure how much we're able to share about that given that we haven't announced any awards yet and we haven't, um, we, we aren't, uh, um, we aren't at that point yet. So, um, okay. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> um, Erica. There, um, for the element, uh, application on the selected investment, um, if there is for windows, for example, when it says 30% of installation, should the cost that we input there be what the 30% installation is, or should we put the full amount and you guys will, I guess, if we get the award, it'll be the 30%. I just want to make sure we're filling that out. Correct. Um, yeah. So for elements you're talking about, right? Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. For um, the investment. Yeah, yeah. The part that you put in there, that's the, the element scope of work in the application. So you should just put the 30% um, in there. Okay, good. That's but, what I did. but then also when you're providing the bid, because it we also require the backup for that number, oh, that should be the right. full cost so that we can yeah. verify that it's only 30%. Okay, perfect. That's what we did. And then okay. that would be just as a just as a note, that'll be verified again um, at closing. Got it. Okay. And then um, I know that I think this has been asked before, but for leading edge, um, it, I, is there going to be, so I get my question is, I know that it was answered. If we don't meet that hundred percent offset or net zero, there's the option to buy energy credits as long as it meets uh, the energy certification that we're going after is that is that a correct statement yeah if the certification that you are uh, are going after allows the purchase of credits then then we that's fine with us the primary goal of leading edge from our perspective is that you achieve one of those certifications however that certification allows you to get there got it okay and is there any and i don't know if you guys are up to this but if if say 
we could meet that without electrification, but by purchasing the credits and still meet the certification, does that put us at a disadvantage with your scoring or if we're still achieving the energy certification, it's still it, enough? It doesn't impact the scoring um, because the only scoring in leading edge is the inefficiency of the building as it is now. Got it. Okay. All right. Those are my two questions. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Tanya. Hi, um, my question is, um, would uh, USDA RD funded projects qualify for this type of funding, specifically um, 514, 516 loan products? Um, so generally, uh, the the uh, um, as I'm displaying here, <laughs> it's only properties with project-based rental assistance contracts. So there are a small number of of those uh, projects that have Section 8 uh, project-based rental assistance contracts, but the vast majority of the RD portfolio has rental assistance through RD um, that doesn't qualify at Section 521 rental assistance, which is not on this list, unfortunately. So, um, okay. so if they have. No. Okay. Great. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else have questions? We will uh, hang out for a few more minutes. Um, just in case there's anyone that pops up with questions, but uh, um, I'll go back to our um, uh, slide here. Um, if anyone does have questions, hey, Erica, did you have another question? Yeah, sorry. No problem. For, for the energy credits, um, is there, I know either way you have options to purchase at I think 10 years in advance, but is there, is there a sp specific commitment to purchasing them that you guys would require to see? Um, so I think we, we would wanna see them reflected in the property budget going forward so that the property can operate successfully with the credits. Um, and then, um, you know, if it's an ongoing thing, um, but that's, I, that's all I can think of. Sarah, is there anything? You can yep, we would defer. We don't have independent requirements on the credits. Okay, just but but indefinite. It's that commitment to just because I know there's different options for buying them annually versus the ten years. So okay. Joshua. Yes. Question about the Invest tool. Um, we're looking at a lot of these files and I'm wondering if there's a, a super secret back way to pull data from the tool um, for a summary. Like, do you all have a way to make a summary tab or is that something we need to figure out? Um, I don't believe so. So um, I don't know, Elena, if you're if you have any anything to add with that, but it's, it was kind of intentionally made to not be uh, readable from a, a, a general uh, data standpoint because we want we don't want people to be able to manipulate and, and affect what they're scoring on, on this property or on, on each property. So yeah, there's there's currently no way to to pull data out of the MBEST. Um, and while it's being used for an open NOFO, we wouldn't be able to make that public. Got it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Anyone have anything to ask? We will hang out for another few minutes just to uh, make sure there aren't any additional questions. One last call for any questions.
All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, we will uh, be here again next week, or you can uh, send your questions if you have any that you want to address in writing uh, to grrp at hod.gov. So thanks, everyone. <laughs>